package for James Miser. Once you start smoking, the consequences will find you. Cigarettes may leave you with stained teeth, gum disease, and more. Times during class, and I tell her, do you talk to him? And it's like, oh, ew. If you vape nicotine, you could be inhaling toxic metals like nickel, chromium, and lead that can damage your lungs. If you vape, you could be inhaling toxic metals into your lungs. To show how scary that is, we made metal monsters. <gasps> With special effects that show metal particles being inhaled. And music. Music that would have made your heart race. But nothing is as scary as the facts. Vaping can deliver toxic metals like nickel and lead into your lungs. That's metal in your lungs. Tail sleep. Some people think that vaping is no big deal, but that is just an illusion. Do you vape? Yeah. You do? Do you have a vape with you today? Yeah. I see. Oh, okay, cool. I want you to hold your hand up for me. I'm going to take the vape like this. I'm going to put it into your hand like that. Okay, this is what I'm going to do, okay? Okay, here we go. Watch very carefully. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that if you vape, you're more likely to start smoking cigarettes? It's not magic, it's statistics. Yeah, yeah I don't want to do that. There's an epidemic spreading. Scientists say it can change your brain. It can release dangerous chemicals like formaldehyde into your bloodstream. It can expose your lungs to acrolein, which can cause irreversible damage. It's not a parasite, not a virus, not an infection. It's vaping. We'll begin with some sobering new information on the coronavirus pandemic. States big and small reporting a steady rise in confirmed cases of the coronavirus. It's a very difficult situation, as, as was predicted. This is going to get worse before it gets better, for sure. The virus is more likely spread by people who have symptoms, but those without symptoms could still be contagious. The CDC recently issued new guidelines saying people who smoke and vape are at higher risk for more severe complications and hospitalization if they get COVID-19. I mean, at the worst time, they said that I had a 5% chance of survival if I didn't get a lung transplant. Some crazy stuff, 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 right? Hi, I'm Rachel, and we all now know viruses are real and can be life-threatening. 
Maybe young people like you and I are more likely to survive a virus than older adults. Hey, we are young and healthy and indestructible. But check our history. Some pandemics like the Spanish flu in 1918 killed millions of young people. Now, medicine has certainly come a long way in a hundred years, but since our world has now changed with the threat of new viruses, we thought this would be a good time to talk about how vaping can compromise your body's ability to fight against any virus. We know that 5.3 million teens vape. That's an enormous number. And as you'll hear, vaping can hurt your lungs and make you more vulnerable to viruses of all kinds. This video is going to concentrate on how vaping directly impacts the pulmonary system. You know, breathing. But first, and some of you may know some of this by now, let's go over the basic ways vaping impacts your health. Due to the urgency of this subject matter, a few of our interviews were recorded remotely due to nationwide social distancing restrictions at the time. But vaping has been around about 10 years, so we're still trying to figure out what happens. Um, I think it's generally agreed upon that vaping does have an effect on the lung. Vaping involves the inhalation of about 30 to 80 chemicals. and. So as you breathe in this cloud of chemicals, they touch down on the cells lining your airways, going all the way deep, deep into the lungs. In fact, some of the chemicals found in vaping liquid are known carcinogens. And we know carcinogens can cause cancer. In the process of using a vaping device, that liquid gets heated and then mixed with air as it is breathed in. And that leads to the creation of two to three times the number of chemicals that were just in the liquid. The juuling and the vaping, like the vape smoke, it like kind of sits in your lungs. It's wet almost. Um, like I've, I've vaped in my car with my windows rolled up and like there's like a film on the windows. So then I started to like think like, okay, if this film is on the windows and it's definitely in my lungs. I get a cough that's like not any kind of cough I've ever had before. So it will fall down to the bottom of the lung along with other chemicals. The lung only has a limited capacity of reabsorbing any extra fluid that comes inside it. The rest stays there. Now you have a stew of all these chemicals sitting at the base of your lungs. It just feels like my body's super different than it used to be, and it feels like my body isn't working as well as it used to be. Vaping hasn't been around long enough to have hard data on lifetime health impact, but we have plenty of data on carcinogens in cigarettes. We already know how destructive they are. In my lab, we're finding that vaping causes effects on proteases. This is kind of interesting and also maybe a little bit scary because protease levels are also increased in the lungs of smokers and we know it's the proteases that actually start to chew up the lungs and cause emphysema. Now, let's get a quick education on how healthy lungs are supposed to work. The lungs have evolved over millennia to do one thing really well, is the exchange of gas molecules. And if you look up the size of an oxygen molecule or a nitrogen molecule, they're incredibly tiny. And our lungs were designed to take in this clean air and quickly get across uh, into the bloodstream oxygen. Lungs were made to breathe oxygen and not anything else. So any other additive that we send through the lungs is potentially a toxin. So cilia are one of our defenses in our lungs that really protect us against all kinds of things that we accidentally or on purpose inhale. So cilia line the airways, and so the things that we breathe in, like pollen, for example, that get into the lungs and they stick to the surface, the cilia then can beat it out. So these cilia move in these waves and they are able to sort of move things up and out. They basically move mucus and other things out of the lungs so we can swallow it or spit it out or cough it out. Um, and ciliary beating is a, um, it's a normal process. So it's kind of like how the lung helps keep itself clean. But in vaping, the data is suggesting that vaping is slowing ciliary beating and potentially slowing kind of mucus movement out of the body. 
And so you can have more of this stuff kind of potentially trapped in there. And so we're seeing effects of these chemicals, not only directly on the cells of the lungs, but also throughout the body because they get into the bloodstream. The first time I felt like I had a problem was probably when I joined the softball team my sophomore year and then basketball too. And then I find myself sitting at the basketball court being out of breath from one lap. I would always be out of breath. I definitely felt a lot less active. I've been an athlete my whole life, and I felt like I just couldn't keep up with the practices anymore the more I was doing it. My lungs did feel a little bit heavy at times. It was more so coughing, almost feeling like a little bit of mucus or something in the back of my throat. It just did not physically feel well at all. Perhaps no story sums up how much vaping damages your lungs more than Daniel Ament's. He's a 17-year-old boy who received a double lung transplant due to, you guessed it, vaping. Today, the first person to receive a double lung transplant after his lungs were irreversibly damaged by vaping is sharing his story. He's speaking out now to warn against e-cigarettes. I just don't want this to happen to other people. Daniel, who is 17, now takes 20 pills a day and will be on medication for the rest of his life and his dream of being a Navy SEAL is finished. Today, his goal is more modest, to live. And the saddest part of that is that a lung transplant, uh, on average, um, somebody only lives five years after a lung transplant. I mean, do we need any more evidence vaping is extremely dangerous? Now, why are health officials worried about vaping and viruses like COVID-19 or a coronavirus or the flu or even the common cold? Well, many of these viruses attack the lungs. And we know from Daniel's case, vaping directly compromises the lungs. Add a virus to that mix and it's a recipe for trouble. Honestly, coronavirus, it's really scary. And I think more than anything, it's one of the most scary things for young people my age because I know that they vape a lot. Just being in high school, I could have observed that maybe like 90% of the kids in my grade vaped. Um, and so, you know, you're already compromising your lungs. They're not as strong. Um, and there's already uh, studies that have shown that um, vaping causes DNA damage and it actually dampens a person's immune system. We have found that the breathing in of these e-cigarette aerosols on a daily basis uh, alters your immune function. So it makes you more susceptible to infections, uh, including bacterial and viral infections. So we know COVID-19 attacks the lungs, causing, among other things, pneumonia. And if you don't know exactly what pneumonia is, well, lungs like air. Pneumonia produces fluid and, hey, I'm not the expert here. Pneumonia is when the lungs are filling up with things that shouldn't be there. So in pneumonia, you will have both a pathogen, such as a bacteria or a virus that have started causing an infection. And then you have our own body's response to that infection. And so our own body brings in powerful cells to attack the bacteria or viruses. And those cells start filling up the lungs and there's leakage from the blood vessels. So you actually get fluid filling the lungs as well. The reason that this is bad is that lungs usually are full of air because they're doing gas exchange. So every breath you take in, you're bringing oxygen into your lungs and most of your lungs are open and ready to take that oxygen and send it across your bloodstream. But in pneumonia, a lot of your lungs have filled up with the bacteria or the virus plus your white blood cells, those immune cells, plus fluid because of this battle going on between your body.